What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, I'm going to be teaching you guys about the SELECT statement and I'm going to be doing it in a way that's very simple. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it step by step, not going to leave out any important parts and I'm just going to kind of assume you're somebody who's totally new to SQL and going to be doing it in a way that's very real world too. Going to be doing it in a way that you're probably going to be using the SELECT in a job and gonna make this kind of like a for dummies because this is very important like I'm gonna slow down really slow down on this one because this is very important for your career and this is almost like one of the fundamental building blocks so if you don't pay attention to any of my other videos this is probably the one and maybe a couple hereafter that you definitely want to pay attention to so just like everything else in SQL select is just kind of the way it sounds you are selecting columns just think of it like that and whenever you use the select statement you're going to be using it in with the from so whenever you think select think from because 99.99 percent of times you're going to be using select with from and just think about it you're selecting from you are selecting a column from a table so right here We've already got, in fact, just go over to your left into your object explorer here, right click on a table that you want. This is right here. A table is denoted by this little calendar looking thing. Right click and select top 1000 rows. And it's actually going to use a, so actually going to do a select statement for you. You can use whatever table that you want to. If you want this exact setup, if you want all of these tables with all this data, make sure to check out my uh, dummy data video on how to populate a database with dummy data and I'll leave a link to it down in the description below in case you want this but select any table right click select top 1000 and it's already going to do a select from for us already straight out of the box you don't even have to worry about it so let's just kind of dissect this piece by piece so we have select obviously our keyword we've got the top 1000 and our database only has 12 records in it, as you can see down here. So there's not going to be 1,000, but you need this top 1,000 in a production environment. Otherwise, you're going to get, uh, you could possibly get millions of records back and it might not even be able to run within the, within like a reasonable amount of time. So you could actually, in our case, we can actually just leave this out in case that confuses you. So. We have these brackets. You don't actually even need these brackets, and I'll kind of describe what these brackets are here in a second. But let's just take out all of this, and let's just try and make this uh, state. Let's try and make this as simple as we can possibly get by with without making it confusing. So we're going to take out all these brackets. This SQL query that's already been generated for us, and accidentally deleted a little bit too much going a little crazy here production brands okay so watch what happens when we run this query it's the same exact thing so what's going on here is it's selecting these columns right here all it's doing is selecting these columns and it's doing it from this table so select is your selector think about it just in terms of the way it sounds you're selecting your columns and from is selecting the table from which you are selecting from very simple it's uh kind of like a conjugative in in a different language it's kind of just the way that it sounds but there's also some rules that you need to be very cognizant of and there's some different types of syntax that you need to be aware of so here this asterisk which you will see all of the time is means all whenever you see this asterisk and you will see this so be very you know pay attention to this you will see this all the time that means you're going to select all of the tables regardless you see before we just had we individually selected our tables and we only had two tables so we just individually selected them and then we went like that so now we have all 
Let's go to a different table and let's actually do the same exact thing. Let's do it one more time just to kind of get um, the repetition down. So let's go down to our sales table or our sales customer. This is another good one because this one has a lot of columns. Right click it, select the top 1000 rows and let's just kind of dive into it. So we are going to select these rows, just each individual one. And it's already written the exact query for us, so we don't even need to take the time to actually write it out. This is a very very useful command, is to just select the top 1,000 rows. And if you look down, you can't actually see, see me because I'm blocking it, but if I move myself over, you can actually see it's selected the top 1,000 rows. Watch what happens if I remove the select top, just like that. Now we have 2,890 rows because we have taken out of that. We've taken that top select top 1,000 off of it. And that's all, basically all that is. So brackets in SQL Server are going to allow you to basically name your tables whatever you want. So let's just go through here. Let's take out all these brackets. Going to... Take out all these. We're going to take out this. Going to take out this bracket, take out this bracket, take out this bracket, take out this bracket. And we're going to select all of our rows. So let's just say, for example, we only want, we don't want the customer ID. We don't want the zip code for just whatever reason. That's how you would select the specific rows that you want. And that's kind of the whole entire reason that you have select. So if we go ahead, we execute it, we go down here, we look, our customer ID and our zip code is no longer there. So we're also, we're looking at this and Another really important part of SQL Server and understanding SQL Server, and this is something that many people don't ever talk about, is you need to learn what aliasing is. And aliasing is, once again, one of those words that sounds exactly like what it is. So let's just say we look at this first name and we th we are thinking to ourselves, like, like that kind of looks ugly. Like, it's got that underscore in it. And what if we have to... Produce, we have to show this to an executive or somebody. Maybe we want, might want to spruce it up a little bit and make it look a little bit better. You have as as a form of aliasing, and you can put a form of the column in a in a format that allows for spaces, and that's kind of what brackets are for. Brackets are there in SQL Server because you can't have spaces in SQL Server. And even though there are brackets before, it just makes it look a little bit better and it makes it look a little uh, more convention. A lot of times you have brackets in SQL Server just by convention. But in this case, it's because if you were to not have these brackets like this, it would not be a actual SQL query. You need those brackets when you're doing aliasing. And you're going to see this a lot. So. Once again, make sure that you're pay, you pay attention to this aliasing part because aliases are everywhere. And nobody actually ever told me like what an alias was. And I just kind of went through like a lot of my career just not really understanding what any of it was. And it kind of bothered me. You can also do aliasing that way. You can do it without the as. You can do it without the brackets. But in, if we had that, it would be not. Um, valid SQL. So if you just want to just put the space and you don't even want the as, you can do that as well too. So we can go email, we can go street, but as soon as you have that space, you're going to have to put it in brackets. And that's uh, the whole gist of what brackets and aliasing and as is in SQL Server. And I really hope you paid attention to that because once again, that is very important. So let's go ahead, let's run this thing. Let's see what it looks like. And instead of these kind of undercase, maybe like dorky looking, <laughs> I don't know, letters, you have a more professional look to it. And that's going to come in very handy because a lot of times when people are looking at SQL, especially if they're not technical, they don't want to be looking at first name and they want things to look pretty. And if you have that 
if you have that skill, you're going to really set your part, set yourself apart as a SQL Server developer, and it's going to make things look awesome. That's pretty much it. That's all you're going to need for select statements. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.